All right, new day and another laptop that needs to be saved, and this time we have an Alienware M18R1. This is a massive 18-inch gaming laptop, um, and here's the thing. The guy was playing the game, and the thing shut off, and it won't come back on anymore. It just gives some sort of flashing blue and red light, so I haven't taken a look at this yet. We're going to take a look together and see if we can get this figured out. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to see if it turns on. All right, so press the power button. Oh, we are getting a power light on the Alienware head here, so let's see what it does. Um, he was saying something about it giving like a red and blue error code. So usually what happens on these machines when they turn on, this will start flashing a certain pattern and then you can figure out, uh, we can look up what the error code is and tells us what's, what's going on with the machine. Um, I'm going to let it sit here, just sitting here. It's not doing any flashing yet. Let me plug in the power cord. Okay, we are getting an error code flashing here now. It is one, two, three, red. One, two, three, four, five, blue. Okay, so a three, five. I think that's a power rail failure, but let's look that up. All right, so if we look here, uh, three, five is what we had. So it was a three, uh, three red and, and five blue. That does indicate a power rail failure. Um, so it doesn't tell us what power rail has failed, but what that means is that we have a uh, one of the power supplies on the motherboard that powers something is not turning on. So it could be the 3.3, the 5 volt, it could be a 1.8, a 1.05, it could be the 1.2. It could be, there's a lot of different power rails on here. Um, so we're going to have to open it up and take a look inside and see if we can get this figured out. All right, and the bottom is off. All right, let's take a quick look around. We got the main battery here. It's an OEM. It looks like there's two NVMe uh, SSDs installed. Here's the Wi-Fi card. Um, a pair of memory sticks, DDR5. This thing has three fans, um, and I believe this is probably the CPU side, and that's the GPU side, and then it does actually have another fan here that cools the, uh, the memory, so... Um, there's not much we can actually measure on this side of the board because most of the, the power supplies are actually going to be on the other side. Um, and considering that the machine is powering on, it's getting the power lights, it means it's not on the main power rail, which is something we could measure on this side. You can see that the DC jack actually plugs in here. Um, but most of the MOSFETs, you can't even, they're not even on this side of the board either. So uh, most likely the issue is going to be on the other side of the board. There is one power rail that we can test right here. It's actually going to be for the RAM. Um, these uh, DDR5 modules actually have a 5-volt power rail that power the RAM. And I have seen on this particular model, um, this power rail ended up, ends up being shorted. Um, there are some capacitors that end up failing, and I'm not sure what the, the rhyme or reason is, but I've seen quite a few of them. So we're going to test that real quick and see if we do have a short there. But in order to test, we have to actually unplug um, the battery. Okay, so with no voltage in the system at all, okay, with no voltage in the system at all with the battery unplugged, we're just going to measure uh, the resistance on that power rail. Uh, I'm just going to be measuring that coil. And so we'll put our, our meter in uh, ohms mode. And I'm just going to measure right on this coil. And what do you know? You see that? We're measuring almost a dead short. Uh, and so... This would probably make it, uh, I probably had about six of these now come in with this power rail shorted. Um, and it's going to be one of these capacitors in this row here. I'm going to take this off and we'll take a look closer under the microscope. So here's the power rail we're looking at. And I'll measure it one more time for you so you can see. So we're just measuring on the side of this coil. And we're trying to figure out, this it should actually be measuring um, kilo ohms, uh, I think uh, uh, something like that. And right now it's not measuring, it's measuring almost a wire. So most likely one of these capacitors, one of these capacitors, or one of these capacitors, the ones I've seen more commonly is one of these four or one of these four. So I don't know if there's just a bad batch of these that were installed in here, but, and I don't, oh, is there a crack on that one? Is that the one? Can we see the crack already? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Can you see it? I think this is the one right there. You see that little line? Let's see if I can get this in focus better for you. I don't know. It's kind of hard to see, but I think that's the one. But if we measure across this, um, it's probably going to measure zero. It is. Um, but all of these are in parallel. All of these. Like these are in parallel. Uh, these are in parallel. These are in parallel. And even all of these over here are all in parallel. So it's hard to know which one is actually having the issue. But physically, that one has a little mark on it, and this one has a little mark. Um, 
we're going to have to inject voltage and we can monitor it under the thermal camera to take a look. I have another video working on the same board. It might have been the 16-inch version. Uh, this is the M18R1. They have an M16R1. They take the same motherboard. And uh, I've showed you how to find it without a thermal camera. This time we're going to take the easy way and use the thermal camera. So let me get that set up. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the memory. Since we're going to be messing with this power rail, we don't want to mess up the, the RAM. And um, we're going to set up our short killer here. You can use a regular power supply. I'm just going to use this um, device here that beeps whenever I inject voltage. And we're going to set it to something like 0.5. We don't need much because it is a dead short. We know that that capacitor is shorted straight to ground. And so this uh, is going to take the direct path back to its uh, negative terminal. And it's going to create a lot of uh, current and heat. And so we we'll should, should be able to see it light up on the uh, thermal camera very easily. So I'll go ahead and pull out their SSDs while we're at it. All right, so we'll ground this here. And so now we have this probe, we can actually touch wherever, and you can see that it actually is pulling some current. I just grounded it out. All right, so we're gonna be injecting voltage right here on this coil, and this is gonna be the shorted power rail. And so we inject the voltage. I can see that we're pulling three amps at 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.5 volts. Um, and so we need to figure out what component is getting hot, so we're gonna just monitor under the thermal camera, and you might've already seen it. There you go. You see how it heated up right in that area? Let's try it again. All right, there you go. You see it? So that's getting hot. And I think it's one of these components right here. So let's get a little closer on that. So I wonder if it's gonna be the one that we thought it was. You know, the one that looks like it has a crack in it right there. Let's try again. It is getting hot right in that area. So how are we gonna figure out, so the thermal camera is not super detailed, it's not gonna tell you exactly where it is, but it's gonna tell you in the general vicinity, but we're just gonna add alcohol to this area. And that way we can figure out uh, what's getting hot. And look at that, do you see it? Do you see which one's getting hot? It is that one that we were looking at. So you can kind of make out that hairline crack that we were thinking is on there. It's very, uh, very subtle. Um, but let's look at it when we inject the voltage. And you can't even see it actually doing it that much, but let's try again. I'm gonna put some more alcohol on it. You see how it dries up? Here we'll actually go up in the voltage a little bit since we know it's a capacitor. Here we go, you ready? There you go, you see it bubbling? So we know that that capacitor is actually shorted like a wire. Because on one side, it's going to be the positive 5 volt on that power rail, and the other side is going to be ground. And so it's sending uh, the current that we're, we're actually injecting in there straight back to ground. And so that thing's taking all the heat, all the power, and so it creates a lot of heat. So all we have to do is remove that component, and the board should work again, but we're going to replace it with a new one. So let's go ahead and get that removed. The problem I have whenever I'm actually working on this particular fault that's on this board is because of it's so tight, it's, be, it's right next to all these different components right here. Um, so we have the NVMe slot, uh, it's a 2230 slot, and then we have both of the RAM slots. And using hot air in this area is actually very difficult, and I have done it before. Um, using your soldering iron by itself, it's pretty easy to take it off, but it's hard to put a new one on. Um, I have some hot tweezers that I finally fixed my hot tweezers and got a replacement, and it was able, I can use them in here. It's still going to be kind of tight, so it's going to be easy to get them off, but it's going to be hard to get it back in. That's basically just a the problem, um, but we're gonna do the best we can. We're gonna try to protect the edges of all this so we don't uh, mar it up with any heat, and then we can uh, pull off that component. All right, so I did get it all protected here. Um, this is just to try to protect those slots from getting melted at all. Um, I'm gonna try not to use hot air, but we're gonna have to use some hot air in order to get the board warm enough to uh, be able to solder on because there is a big ground plane in this area. Um, but we'll use the hot tweezers to take off the component which will actually resolve the issue with the board and the board should turn on, um, but replacing the components can be the hard part. So, but we're gonna have to do the best we can. All right, so I got my Metcal uh, hot tweezers. We're gonna apply a little bit of flux to the area. And let's see if we can, we're gonna have to get it in a better orientation so I can grab it. There we go, I should be able to get down in there. Now you see how, it, because of the angle, it's gonna be hard to get in there. Even this tape's a little bit in my way. See if I can, I can adjust the tape. 
There we go. All right. So we're going to be able to grab it like that. Let me get some air going so we don't have to breathe in the fumes. Okay. So let's see if we can get this thing off of here. So we are able to grab it. And we're heating it up. It's going to take a little bit of time. There is a huge ground plane on this. Yep, and we're going to have to bring in a little bit of hot air. I'm not going to do high temp. We're just going to do 300 degrees C. And that will just help heat up this area a little bit. 300 degrees C is not going to damage these connectors. There we go. We got it off. All right, so here it is. And we saw the crack on it already. You know, we kind of looked at it and we're able to identify it physically, but you wouldn't have been able to do it without a microscope. So you still, it looks like you have to have specialized equipment um, to find which one it is. Now injecting voltage and just putting alcohol in there, you might be able to figure out which one it is that way. Um, I am seeing a lot of this particular model, the M18R1 and M16R1 having this issue. So it's very strange and I don't know if it's just a bad batch of these caps or not, um, but let's go ahead and grab a new one. We'll get it installed and, and see if it resolves our issue. Okay, let's see if we can prep this area uh, with fresh solder. This is when I don't want to accidentally touch one of these memory slots. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to add a little bit of marring on the side. There we go. We got solder on both of those points. Try not to get it on every other component here. Okay. All right. Those are ready to go. I grabbed the new capacitor. I got it held here. Okay. Ah, okay, see if we can get this installed right through there. So I'm gonna add a little bit of hot air like we did before. We're only doing 300 C, so we're not gonna worry about melting any components, but it will at least uh, preheat the board a little bit for us. So I'm just gonna keep that right there while we're doing that. But 300 C is gonna have a hard time uh, just soldering it in place. I usually use 450. So that's why we're still gonna use the hot tweezers to actually install this. There we go. Come on. Almost got it. Almost got it. We are working in a very tight space. Okay, move the heat away. And there we go. We're lined up. Can we just reflow it one more time. Okay, that's looking good. Got to clean up all this junk off of here. All right, we don't want to leave all that flux on the board. We want to make it nice and clean, make it look like we haven't even been in here. Pull off this sticky. So make sure, if you're doing any board repairs like this, you need to make sure to clean the flux off, and it's better to do it while it's still the board's still warm. Um, if you try to do it at the end, then you'll have some issues. See, we even had flux kind of go all the way down in here, and see, I'm having a hard time getting in here with my um, Q-tip, but we're going to be able to do it. I have some pointier ones I'm going to put down in there. There we go. And this is just, I'm using 99% isopropyl. You can use 100, you can use whatever you want. I'm just, usually the higher, the better. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, now the question is, did we resolve the short? And I'm assuming we did but we have the test. So let's see if the short is gone. Yes, and we are getting kilo ohms now and about 5K. And before we were getting basically zero, like a wire. So um, this board should actually turn on, but moment of truth, let's go ahead and uh, put the memory back in and plug the battery in and see if we can get this thing to turn on and power on. All right, got the memory installed. I installed their uh, SSDs. We'll just put this cover back on. And let's plug in the battery. And will it turn on? So first thing, we'll plug in the power. I just want to see if the power meter is going to start pulling any current. And look at that. It's pulling point, oh, it's pulling three amps. So that might be a charge current or it might be actually powering on. Uh, we do have the backlight on the keyboard, which I think we did before. And then we have the Alienware uh, power light on but are we gonna have that error anymore? Cause that, that three five error that pointed to that power rail issue, 
was probably pointing to the RAM uh, having the, the power rail issue, but let's see. Okay, we are up to almost 6 amps, 5.78 amps. So this is a good sign that we are going through a, a, a startup process, a posting process. Now, because we had all the power out of the system, it is going to go through a, a little bit of a CMOS reset. It takes a little bit more time to start it for the first time, but can we do it? All right, boom, we got the Alienware screen. All right. So we did resolve the issue. Let's uh, go into the BIOS real quick and see if everything's showing up. All right, yeah, it looks like the, the video card's showing up, the GPU and CPU are showing up, has 32 gigs of RAM. Um, so I'll end up running full diags on this, uh, but I do find it's kind of interesting that that row of capacitors, I've, I've seen multiple machines on those row of capacitors go out multiple times. So I don't know what's going on with that. So we did resolve that power rail failure. Um, so now the laptop is actually turning on. It looks like it's going into a please wait um, on their OS. So I'm wondering if they have a Windows update happening. All right, well, there you go. We're to their operating system. So I did resolve another one of those, these issues on these, these boards. And I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. And thanks for watching. I saved another laptop.